Welcome back to Dart 101 by example, and this is the list data type, the built-in data type for Dart. I'll talk about list, the array, and the brackets, creating, adding, and getting, sorting, and iterating for the Dart list. So to get started, I'm gonna go to the Dart pad and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And what I wanna do is talk about how this is a built-in data type and constructing arrays. But I'll start out by showing you how I could do a literal array or a list. I may talk about this as a list or an array, but this is the literal value, and this doesn't have a problem with the Dart analyzer or compiler, and so that just prints out nothing. So moving on, I'm going to print the array out, and I'm going to go, this is going to be my array, and I'm going to end that, and I simply constructed the array in the print statement. And there it goes, I printed one, two, three. Well, what if I wanted to define the array as a variable? Well, I can define a list here, and that's going to be, let's say, A, and this is going to be a string array, A, B, and C, and terminate that line. And what if I printed that line? I'll go list and terminate that. That'll be A, B, C, D. Oh, there it is, A, B, C, D. So that was pretty easily to print a list. And th this list is inferred, the analyzer infers that the variable is defined as a list or an array. And the next way I want to define a list is using a generic type. So I'll go list2 equals, and I'll say string. And this is going to be a list of string data, data types. And I'm going to go, uh, let's say, a... And the next one will be, uh, let's say here, uh, Z, and I'll go K. And we'll print list two, P-R-I-N-T, and list two. And we'll finish that, and we'll see what list two comes up as, A-Z-K. So that's easy. What happens here is the analyzer infers that this is a string. Well, I'm more or less telling telling you that this is my intention for this array. So I intend for this array to be of string data types. And the next one I'm going to say list is going to be a string. I can tell you my intent on the left side, and this is going to be list three equals, and I could say string here as well. And this is getting a little bit more verbose, but I could say a, 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 b, b, and this is going to be c, c. And so this is going to be another day, another way to to define your string variable or an array variable. And I'm going to hit run over here and it should show up a list, A, A, B, B, C, C. So that's an easy way of doing it. Well, there's another way I could do it. I could go, let's say var empty equals an empty list. And that's an empty string. So if I were to print that is empty and then I could print empty and, and string or interpolation here and that is empty I'm thinking and talking and typing is a challenge sometimes is empty okay so that's so that's fantastic is empty is basically empty list okay so that's that's easily said and done well what if I wanted to add to the empty list and make it no longer empty so I could go empty dot add and I could add an item M and let's say empty dot add okay add another item O and let's look at that empty.add. This is getting redundant, but I just want to make a point that you can add items easily to the list. A M O R. And then we're going to go, let's print that list to give an idea what that empty, empty is now. Um, let's say empty and print that list. Okay, hit run. And let's see how that prints. Empty is, uh, is no more. Okay, so that works. Okay, so what what's the next thing I want to show? Well, var list for, and let's say equals new list. I'm going to instantiate the list this way, and I got a capital in the wrong spot, and we'll go string and generic with with this. Okay, so I instantiated the list with the object list. Now let me just give it a little bit more room at the bottom here, and it's going to be the same thing as the. Let's go print. What does that look like? List for. And I'm going to print list four, and let's see what happens. It shows up in the console over here. It should print. Okay, I didn't see anything. Okay, that just updated a little bit slower. Okay, list four is empty, just the same as empty. So it doesn't really matter how you construct it. You can construct it in different ways. So you could say this is my string literal construction, or this is my string object construction. Either way, it's all the same. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. That's pretty cool. Okay, so list four. What do I want to do? I could go list. Let's let's talk about adding again. List four dot add, and I'm going to go a, 
and let's say a d d and I added something and let's go print list four uh, just for effect here list four is and we'll do string interpolation here and terminate that line and see how it runs string four is add okay so that's great that's easy to do that's the list and let's say I wanted to insert somewhere else in the list so I could go list four dot insert and let's say I wanted to 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 insert at the first index or zero index in this case so let's say zero and then let's say D okay and that should insert it so let's go print list uh, list four is now and let's do list four okay terminate that line there and we'll go run and list four is now dad well with an extra d but the point is i inserted a character or an item an element in that list at the zero index which shoved everything down and changed the indexes there okay so that's pretty cool it's easy to insert Okay, so the next item I want to talk about is a list of fixed lengths. So I'll go var fixed equals new list, and then I'll specify how many items are in the list. And then I'll specify, okay, what, what type of list this is going to be. This is going to be strings. So I could say print fixed is and say fixed, and that will print my list of fixed strings. So if I hit run, now that's looks like an array of three null strings. Well, that was easy to do a fixed list. If I move on to how I'm going to access items in the array. So let's say I have the array there and I want to uh, get one of the items. Let's say var accessing, uh, let, call this the accessing array. And I'm going to go, let's say AA and BB and CC. Okay, so that's my accessing array. Well, how do I get one of those items out of this? Well, this is 0, 1, and 2. It is by index, so let's say I want to get that item in the index. So I'm going to go string item equals to accessing call the array. And then I'm going to use the brackets as the operation to get one of those items. And then I'll say 2. And then I can print the item here, item is now equal to let's see what the item says item is cc so let's say zero one two z that'd be the last item in the list okay so that's great that's easy to find that's easy to access that item in the list well let's say i wanted to do um i wanted to get the last item in that index and let's say i add an item up here let's say dd and I want to go accessing now. Let's get that last item. And how would I do that? So I'm going to say int and equals accessing dot length. And then I'm going to say minus one because it's a zero ordinal index. And then I want to say what I want to go accessing. Uh, let's see, accessing autocomplete is then I'll get that end and then that'll be a string and that'll be last item is equal to and then I'll print that last item let's say last item is now equal to last item and let's print that over to the right okay so last item is DD is that the last item it is so that worked correct so basically I'm using length to get the length of the list and then I I subtract by one to get a zero or you know to to say it's from zero to the end and not from one to the end okay so that was great well let's say i wanted to fill in with some default values well i'm going to go var filling and for this list new list dot filled is then three and we'll look over here and i can say filled with three that's three items of zero so let's say zero and let's say print uh, well, I call that filing. Well, let's go filling. And then let's say filling is then string interpolation and then terminate that line and then go run. And that's going to be, let's see, I, uh, I created three items with the default value as zero. So that's, that's using the filled constructor. Pretty cool. There's lots of constructors, by the way, you can look at the, the API and see what the other nifty methods are, are available to do uh, or to use.
Okay, so what if I wanted to sort an array? So var sorting, let's say, say I have an array and it's sorted backwards, Z, and then the character I and the character A. Okay, what if I wanted to sort that array? Well, that's pretty easy to do. I can go call sorting, the collection, and I'll call sort. And then I have an L and R for left and right. Okay, whoops, I got L and R. Let's look at sorting over here. It should show up. Okay, sorting. Well, let's, let's back up here and go sorting. I can see a string and a string because that's my array. I got to compare the left and the right. So let's go string left and string. Oh, I got to, that's a function. So that's auto completion works a little bit differently in Dartpad. So let's go string L and string R for left and right. And we can do uh, body here, uh, function syntax. And what we want to do is go, how would we compare that? So I can go l.compare to, to um, the right side. So that's easy. Or I could do that inline function, and I'll cover that a little bit more in, in, the, in the coming series. So you can do functions in different ways to be more, whoops, I did compare to, I think that should be right. Okay, so let's run that and see what happens over here. And then I forgot to add return. So I got to add return because I need to return the value there of which one's greater, minus one, zero, or one. And I can see, let's say I, oh, I didn't print. Let me print sorting. Uh, let's go quote sorting is now and say sorting and terminate that line and we'll go, okay. So let's look at that AIZ. So I now sorted my array by simply saying sorting.sort and I can do string L string R and that is inferred based on the values in that array. Okay, so what if I wanted to iterate over that array? I could go, and I'm gonna talk about collection iterating in a later episode in greater detail, So, I, but I can go sorting.for uh, each and I can see it's going to be string and okay string that's kind of nice the analyzer tells me that it's going to be a string so I can do the same thing as above I'll do a function body and this is now going to iterate over that collection and what I could do is go print um, v equals or v is let's say the value there is value and terminate that and I can hit run and over on the right we can see that V is A, I, and Z. So I simply iterate over that array. So that's a quick and easy way to iterate. Well there's another way to do that. I can go for string V and sorting and then I can do a body there. I can use a for statement and I can print and VV is a value and Let's look at that. So VB should show up. And that's the second way of do doing that, same type of way. I like the, the for each because that reads better than what I think the for statement does. But it, it's your preference at the end of the day, which method you use. I think uh, you can choose. So that's what's nice about Dart. It's flexible because it, it kind of takes the best of all the languages and brings it into Dart. So. So that covers what I wanted to cover basically in Dart. In a later episode, I'll cover more about how the sound typing and inferred work in collections in a little bit more detail. In this episode, I simply wanted to cover all the basics of the list and the array. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Dart, and I'll catch you later.